we decided it's finally time to get ourselves a generator. A few months ago, we did our first boondocking camping attempt and within a little over 24 hours, found our trailer had run out of power. So that was a big sign for us that to not experience that again, getting a generator was in store for us. We also live in Southern California where we have power outages. Lots of them. Yeah. Especially in our area. So we um, have fire issues in uh, Southern California Edison. Uh, does do a lot of power outages in order to prevent fires. Yeah. And we've had some that have lasted, what, close hours. to 24 hours? Yeah. yeah. One of the last ones was a long one. And so when that happens, the food in the refrigerator is at peril, the food and we have a separate freezer in the garage, that's at peril. So um, having a generator is gonna serve multiple purposes for us. One is for when we do have power outages in the future to make sure that our food stays okay. Yeah, that, that's one of the biggest. You can yeah. get by with lanterns and flashlights and all of that, but the, when the food goes bad, you have to throw it out. Yeah. So that's not good. So food's the big one. And then also for, for camping, this is just going to be a good thing to have. We've got one trip coming up pretty soon where we will be out in the woods with no hookups for close to a week. Uh -huh. And there'd be no way, I think, for us to do that without a generator. So this is going to get its maiden voyage in just about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a lot of research before we landed on the unit that we chose. A lot, a lot of back and forth. Um, there was uh, lots of questions about which one was best for us. There are ones that are much bigger, have much more power, but then you're looking at trying to lug around a hundred pounds, which for us would be a two person event. Yeah. And I have a bad arm, so that's not always the best thing too. So. And my back sometimes yeah. goes out of kilter. So we actually went down to Harbor Freight and um, took a hand at trying to lift one of the hundred pound generators they had yeah. there just to get a feel of it. So funny because the, yeah. the guy that worked there was like, oh no, 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 no. I'll do it, I'll do it. He Don't touch it. it. Yeah, he didn't understand yeah. we were trying to test it. Yeah. It was but cute. yeah, so we decided I think for us getting something more in the 50 pound range was gonna suit our needs better, which brings us into the neighborhood of a generator that's close to 2000 watts, which, you know, I think for us with the trailer, the only thing that this is probably on its own not going to be able to run is the air conditioner. But everything else will be good to go. And I think, you know, we live in a climate where we don't have the, the combination of hot plus humidity like some of the southern states. And we can also plan our trips to try to avoid being in a boondocking environment when the temperatures get out of control. So we think we can make well, and, and yeah. If it doesn't work, uh, this particular generator and why we chose it has a, a parallel connection so you can actually connect it with another one and give you you know more power that you need and that would run our air yeah that we needed to. yeah and so and the third consideration that we had was what kind of fuel did we want to have run this so most of the generators run on gasoline but there was some that have a propane option we were looking at the Honda I think it's the 2200 there was an outfit that offers those with the propane conversion, but I think that the price on that was somewhere around 1700 bucks. And then we had recently come across the Champion Dual Fuel, which ran us just shy of $600. So about a third of the cost, um, no conversion required. So straight out of the box, it's gonna run on gas, gonna run on propane. We like the propane option because if we're going to travel with this for camping, we don't have to travel with gas cans, so a little bit safer. You know, if we hook this up to a 20 pound tank, we'll get ample amount of power available to us. Plus, we'll also have the option of if we need to hook it up directly to the propane tank that's on the back of the Airstream, just hook it up like that and we should be good to go. So, the mail person brought this to us just a few days ago, still in the box, so we're gonna unbox it today, take a look at it, and if it all goes well, hook it up to the propane tank and uh, pull the cord and see if it works. Mm -hmm. 
So that's coming up right next. Let's see what's in the box. Engine oil comes in the box. Connector cord comes in the box. This is for the propane. Some other thing, we'll figure out what this is. <laughs> and drum roll. <laughs> the generator. <laughs> And that is it. All right, so after we get the generator out of the box, the next step that we're gonna do is fill the oil reservoir with uh, the oil. This comes with the Champion, so the first fill up, um, you don't have to go out and buy one of these. This is 10 weight 30, 500 milliliters, and the opening for it is gonna be behind this door over here. So these two buttons are just going to turn counterclockwise. And that opens up the uh, area here. Okay. All right. So on the um, fill area for where the oil goes, the very first time there, there is a warning label that you're gonna see here that is gonna reprimand you to not try to start the unit until you put the oil in first. So super important. So that's our first step here. So we'll open this up. And we have ourselves a funnel with a super duper long neck. Just like that. Hopefully it's all in there. Do some gravity here. So we'll close her back up. And then put this back on. Which how does it go? All right, so our next step here is we're going to connect the propane to the generator. Wanna make sure you're doing this outside, which we are at. So I've got the, um, the hose that came with the generator, gonna hook this up to, we have a 20 pound propane tank. We're gonna hand tighten. The other end of this, um, Table. We'll take the um, rubber piece off and it says we're going to just stick it into this area right here and push until we hear a click. And now we get to the moment of truth. So we're going to see if we can start this off of the propane. We've seen some videos where some people had trouble starting this, but I think it's because of the, uh, the sequence of events that they tried. So this is our first time trying to do this. So according to the manual, step number one is gonna be we're gonna open the propane. The propane is open. Next thing we're gonna do is right now it's in the off position and we're gonna move this dial to choke, which is all the way over to the far about two o'clock position. So we're in choke now. And, and so now to, before we try to start it, we're gonna prime it. So that means that with the, this in the choke position, we're gonna pull the recoil three to five times. So we're gonna do this. It's not supposed to start yet. I'm gonna go four. <laughs> and now the moment of truth, we're gonna put this on propane which I believe is the uh, green guy here. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. We have 
Alright, so the very first time powering this up, I think we were impressed that it sounded fairly quiet compared to what we were expecting, so that's nice. Um, first time starting it, took us a few more pulls than um, what the manual said, but what, probably about eight pulls or so in, we got it going. It's running off the propane super. There's also this plastic piece that came in the box too, so what's gonna happen with this, and we're gonna do this later, but this is gonna attach to this part of the propane hose assembly. And it's just a plastic cover that provides um, a place where this hose can be stored. So it makes that a little convenient. So that's a nice feature, but there we have it. So we've got our generator. We're ready for our next boondocking experience where hopefully we don't find ourselves without any power. This should give us numerous hours of utilization, power, and um, we'll probably report back after we've been out in the woods for a week to see how uh, the experience of the Champion dual fuel generator ends up for us. So not sure if my voice is gonna get picked up. I'm standing about three feet away from the generator, but one of the things I like about this champion that we picked up is it's fairly quiet so I'm walking away whoops from it at the end of the uh, rig right now I can barely hear it and a few more steps away I'm probably 20 steps away from the airstream very 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 faint and a few more steps I can't hear it at all so I'm sure other campers are gonna appreciate that kind of quietness, it's, uh, it's a quiet generator, so that's really nice. I also like the fact that it does run on the propane. We ended up getting a 20 pound tank for this trip, which is gonna be more than plenty, running this thing only an hour a day tops. Um, so that's a nice option, you know, travel a little safer with the propane in the back versus the gas, and we get more of the fuel available to us. So happy with that purchase. The Champion Generator uh, is definitely improving our boondocking experience after our uh, first time without a generator boondock fail. So step in the right direction. So hope you find this helpful. We will have a link to being able to purchase this generator off of our Amazon page. So if you're interested in it, you can click that link and it'll take you to it. Um, again, nice feature about this unit is it runs on both gasoline as well as propane. So you've got those two options, which um, having options is always a nice to have. And until next time, we'll see you at the places where we go.